Amen. Amen. We give God thanks. Hallelujah. Um, we have our scripture reading. This is our mount of rest roundabout. Shall we hear the word of the Lord? We're taking our scripture reading from Joshua chapter 21, verse 43 to 45. And then we continue into chapter 22. Joshua 21, 43. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swore to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swore unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Verse 45. There failed not out of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel, all came to pass. Chapter 22, verse 1 to 6. Then Joshua called the Rebenites and the Gadites and half of the tri tribe of Manasseh and said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you and have obeyed my voice in all that I command you. Ye have not left your brethren these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. Verse 4. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren, as he promised them. Therefore now return ye, and get you unto your tents, and unto the land of your possession, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave you on the other side, Jordan. Verse 5. But take diligent heed to do the commandment of the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you, to love the Lord your God, and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commands, and to cleave unto him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Verse 6, the final verse. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went unto their tents. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to sing um, a hymn before we go into the word. Um, the Lord spoke to me that this new month of December is going to be a month of rest roundabout. Yeah. You may not know how it will happen. I may not know how it will happen. You may not even feel it right now. You may, you may be feeling pressure all around you. It does not matter what you are feeling, but what the Lord says is what matters. And if you're going to have rest, then you have to be a conqueror and overcomer. It takes conquering to have rest. You can't have rest while you are in the battle. So just while in the battle, do not rest. It's after the battle that rest comes. Amen. So we're going to take that song. Conquerors and overcomers, now are we. Through the blood of Christ, we have victory. Amen. Give us a tune. Yeah. Most of us know the tune, isn't it? Da, 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 Right, well, come to the keyboard quickly. <laughs> Amen. Let them swap with you. Amen. Amen. Ayo, you can give us your African twist. African twist. <laughs> Rise with me. 
I want you to go around to say to one someone, brother, tell to a brother, brother, I am more than conqueror. Sister, I am more than conqueror. I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. I am more than conqueror. I am an overcomer. Through the blood of Christ that was slain. He lived and reigned again. More than conqueror I am. In the blood of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated in God's presence. Father, I thank you for the victory that you gave us through the shed blood at Calvary. Thank you, Lord, that your son, he purchased victory for us. Through that sacrifice on Calvary, we are more than conquerors. We rejoice in your victory today, O oh Lord. We thank you for the provision of the shed blood at Calvary. Today, Lord, as I speak to your people, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will speak through me in Jesus' name. You are a covenant-making God and a covenant-keeping God. You said this month shall be a month of rest roundabout for us. And I believe it. We claim it, Lord, and we, we rejoice in your word. Speak to your people, O oh God, and bless them by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I say happy Sunday to every one of us, and happy season. It's a very special, unique season. The season that we commemorate the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A season that brought hope to the world. A season that brought salvation to all men. If Jesus was not born, you and I will have no hope. Since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, God sent man away from his presence. He put an angel at the gate of the Garden of Eden to watch over it. Because God was very disappointed. And it was Christ that came to reconcile us back to God. And to reconnect that lost glory in the Garden. So today, for everyone that accepts Christ into our lives, that glory that was lost is restored. Yeah. And that's the reason why we are more than conqueror. No devil or the power of hell can defeat man if you are in Christ. That's why Apostle Paul said, Christ in me, the hope of glory. And that glory is not a glory that we, we take and receive when we get to heaven. It starts here. It's a glory that that starts here. And as it starts here, we walk through this world with the assurance of the glory of God upon us. So we go to him with that glory. Not that we should expect to take it when we get there. No. So in this particular season that we are in, we have to be very grateful that um, God did what he did by sending his son to be born. Secondly, we have to take advantage of it. Because you will know that in the world, even with all that God has done, many are still suffering when there is a way out. And the third thing that we need to do in this season is to look up. For our redemption drawing now. Our Savior is coming soon. I, I was listening to um, 
a YouTube. And there was this pastor. I think Pastor Sarah too had that YouTube with me that day. <laughs> this man is a pastor of a church. And he was talking on the YouTube, on his YouTube page. I don't even know how I stumped on it. He was talking, saying, look, all of you Christians that you are, say you are waiting for the second coming of Jesus, you are wasting your time. You are liars. God told him that Jesus is not coming back again. Pastor said, I had it. And said, hey, is that a pastor? Is, is that yes? She took him to listen. What? These are the kind of things that have proliferated the earth. It will have been reasonably, relatively okay if it was just left to the world. But to be hearing that from the mouth of someone that professes to be a pastor. And he has a church. And there are people in that congregation. So you know that. Indeed, the time has come. That we need to wake up to the realization of the prophecy. That in the last days, perilous time shall come. But for us, in this month, it's a different promise for us. A promise of rest round about. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to take us through the first three verses of our scripture reading in Joshua chapter 21, verses 43 to 45. There was an incident, an event that led to this time. The children of Israel, since they, um, they came out of the land of Egypt, God gave them a promise. He has even said that land before them. He said, look, I've given you the land. Just go. Take, take it up. Unbelief worried them. Fear bewitched them. Um, at a point, they, they had to send spies to go and spy the land. They don't need to go and spy the land. God has spoken. When God speaks, he stands by his word, he stands on his word. But they send spies to go and spies went. They brought disappointment to them because out of the 12 tribes that went, 10 leaders of the tribes came back with evil report. They, they complicated and compounded their fear. They were already afraid before those spies went. And when those people came and they made their fear to grow worse, so we are just like grasshoppers. There were giants there. People that were there are too mighty for us. They are too strong for us. We can't take that country. Of course there were giants there. Of course the sons of Enoch were there. <laughs> but what did God say? He said, go, take the country. I have given it unto you. Only two came with good news. Joshua and Caleb. And the scene went on. And at this point in time, finally, they fought the last, the, the last battle. And they, they won the land. They took over the land. And here now Joshua was addressing them. And I'll take from Joshua chapter 21, 43. And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which is swear to give unto their fathers. And they possessed it and dwelt therein. God is asking me to tell you every promise that he has given you that he has made covenants with you he will release them unto you in this month. Amen. All the expectations of your heart, the desires of your heart things that you have been looking unto God for the church of Israel has been waiting for this promise hundreds of years since God made it to their father Abraham but God fulfilled it. It's time of God's fulfillment of his promises upon your life in this month. And that's the reason why he's saying that it's going to be a month of rest round about. And verse 44. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swear unto their fathers. 
And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. Do you know that there will be no enemy that will be able to stand before you in this month? Everyone that has troubled you, worried you, pursued you, those that have fought with you. The children of Israel had many enemies. They fought many battles before they came to this point. Many, the Edomites came against them, the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Ammonites, many, the Philistines. But out of them all, the Lord gave them victory. The, the Lord gave them victory, and the Lord will give you victory in the name of Jesus. None of your enemies will be able to stand before you in the name of Jesus. And the Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. I see God doing that same thing for you in this month. God will deliver all those enemies into your hands. The ones that will want to make peace with you, the Lord will make them to have peace with you. The ones that will refuse to walk, make peace with you, the Lord will make them to become footstool for you. You stand on them. You need to realize and understand that you are men and women of authority and power. A lot of times, uh, you know, the children of Israel, the reason why they've lost some of the battles they've lost in their life is because they refuse to allow themselves to remember who God is in their life and who they are, they are to God. That means that they didn't know their identity. But the moment they understand their identity and they know who they are, they always win. So the same with us too. Many of us, we carry potential supernatural power in us. Power to speak and it comes to pass. Some of us, our bowels are full of power. All you need is just that courage to speak it out. But when you don't speak it out, nothing happens. Do you know it's not enough to have the knowledge of the word of God? It's not enough. Until you speak the word. God had the word all in him. He had the knowledge and he had the word in him. He didn't just keep quiet and wave at creation and the creation starts to appear. He spoke it. On the first day he spoke. Second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day. Sixth day. And Jesus did the same. Then Satan came to tempt him. Jesus had the power to just do this and Satan will disappear. He had that power. But he spoke Spoke the word. It is written. It is written. Learn to exercise the power that God has invested in you. Every time we come into God's presence, God releases something into our lives. Amen. And verse 45. I love the verse 45. I love verse 45. I love verse 45. They are filled, not ought. My goodness. You need to understand scripture. Don't read the Bible as if you are reading literature. Don't read the Bible as if you are reading poem. Don't read the Bible as if you are just passing through the newspaper. Let the Bible, let it have some meaning in us. Amen. They are filled not out of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. Oh my goodness. God. Thank you Jesus. All came to pass. All came to pass. All came to pass. What has God been speaking to us since the beginning of this year? Let, let's leave the previous years alone. Let, let's just leave all the other years. Let's dwell on 2022. Let's dwell on 2022. What has God been speaking to us? Uh, you know, you, 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 can't be, you can't be receiving the promises of God and be operating as if you, uh, you don't know what you are doing. I thank God for Pastor Sarah and Apostle Sam and those who God have given the, the understanding that when the team comes every month, 
you must hold it like if, as I say, your life depends on it and run with it. They inspire me. They inspire me. They keep, they, they, they keep me going. They, they encourage me with the, with the way that their faith is expressed. Remember that the last verse that we read is in verse 45. They have failed not aught of any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. That house of Israel is you now in his presence, Christ, Tabernacle, Church. Leave the house of Israel alone. Their time has come. Let them deal with their own issue. It's your time. It's your turn. The promises are for you now. All came to pass. All came to pass. A lot of us are good students of English. And you know what all means. There is nothing outside all. All is all came to pass. So we now want to quickly look at what God has been talking to us about since January this year. In January of this year, it was our month of what? Great visitation. The Lord spoke to us. He said this month of January will be a month of what? Great visitation. And February, what was it? It was our month of divine manifestation. What about March? March was our month of divine acceleration. April was our month of God's redemptive love. May was our month of spiritual consciousness. June was our month of fulfillment of dreams, including visions. July was our month of elevation. August was our month of glorious jubilation. September was our month of supernatural next level. October was our month of appreciation and gratitude. And you know what the Lord did in our midst. Last month was our month of rivers in the desert. Would you say that those promises are not good enough? Are they not for you? Verse 45 there says the Lord fulfilled and brought to pass everything that they had spoken to the house of Israel, which is you. Since January, we have been engaging in what I will call a battle to actualize every promise every month. We have been in battle all year. And through the grace of God, God has given us the victory. We won. Every month we won. And the last month of the year, the Lord said, that battle is enough. I have conquered for you. It's time for you to rest. I pray that God will give you rest. I pray that God will give you rest in the name of Jesus. There was a king in 2 Chronicles 20, King Jehoshaphat. He had an encounter. He too was like you and I. There were three nations that came against him. It was a terrifying time for him. They came, in fact, the Bible says that they were multitudes. Multitude means when you, you can't count them enough. Three nations. Three nations come against a small city, Judah. What did Jehoshaphat do? He went to God. As he sought the face of the Lord, the Lord gave him instruction. Just like the Lord did for us this year, who, who fought all our battles, the Lord fought his battle. And I love the verse 29 there. What a beautiful verse. Verse 29, that's 2 Chronicles. Chapter 20, verse 29. 
And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries. When they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. You think people are not watching you? People are watching you. Even the enemies, so-called enemies, they are watching you. They've been wondering what is going on. How is it that this person cannot be defeated? What is the matter? At the point, they will start to call you witch or wizard. They said, that sister, she's a witch. Oh, that brother is a wizard. Oh, because they can't understand. They fought you, fought you, fought you, fought you. They can never conquer you. They will now begin to call you a witch. I'd rather be called a witch for Jesus. Because I will not, because you will not, you will not call me a witch, allow you to overpower me. I will conquer every enemy. I will conquer every enemy. That is the promise of God. And that's the reason why I ask us to sing that song. So that that song can make sense to us. It can resonate in our mind. Conquerors and overcomer. Now are we. Through the blood of Christ at Calvary. He gave us what? Victory. Verse 30. That's where I'm going on this one. Verse 30, 2 Chronicles 20, 30. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was what? Was quiet. For his God gave him rest round about. Do you know that your reign in this month is going to be very quiet? In your homes, to be very peaceful. In your businesses, to be very quiet. In your marriage, to be very peaceful. In your health, Pastor Apostle Sam has confirmed it. He confirmed it in his testimony. The high blood pressure that was worrying these doctors and all the medical team around him. They looked at it and they saw that it went right down. Because it's a season of rest for him. When it's your time to have rest, you don't need to struggle. You don't fight. You don't, you don't fight or rest. Rest means rest. Rest means rest. And the Lord gave him rest round about. And his reign was very peaceful. That's what the Lord will do for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had... Uh, uh, sorry, let, let's go to God. God, God had the um, same encounter, isn't it? And somebody, somebody mentioned that. I think it was either during the um, conscious prayer or... Or was you? Oh, God bless you, sir, Elder, during the welcome address. I was just going to say that, have you, have you, you know, looked at my notes? Amen. God had the same experience, isn't it? In Genesis chapter 2, um, let's read verse 1, and then I'll read verse 2 to close it. Verse 1 of Genesis 2 says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. God could have been a superhero man that doesn't need to rest, isn't it? He could have just continued the account in history for us in the Bible and then jumped from that um, account of verse 28 and just jumped, to, sorry, from, from the account of uh, the end of uh, Genesis chapter 1 and just continue to something else and omit that area of him taking time to rest. But God took time to rest. So if God took time to rest, why do you think you and I, you don't need rest. We need rest. And I want to say this to some of us that work too hard and you don't give yourself time to rest. You are doing yourself injustice. You are actually working against the desires of God for your life. 
you are. I won't go too strong to say that you want to be your own enemy. Because of course you are going to be your own enemy. If you don't rest. Some of us, we walk too hard. You don't take time to rest. When they call you, you are always on the road. You wake up at 5 in the morning. You come back at 11 at night. And you do it every day. Even sometimes we struggle to find a day to come to church. Sometimes you go to work on Sundays as well. And you don't consider your life. It's as if your life does not matter. Uh, uh, look at when that young man died in America the other day. When that white police officer nailed on his neck and, and killed him. What's the name of that man again? George Floyd. People came out in their tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, if not even millions all around the world, and they began to bring out a slogan, black lives matter. It does. So why are you doing as if your life don't matter? Some of you, you walk, 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 and you don't take time to rest. There is no superhuman. If God has not shown himself like a superhuman, who is man to want to counter the, the sample God gave us? So if you know you are in that category and you are here listening to me, whether you are on Zoom watching and listening or you are here physically, change your mind. Personally, it gives me psychological stress when I see someone around me that is restless. When I see someone around me that is restless, just going, 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 and not stopping. I know that it's not sustainable. You can't sustain it. At a point, something must give way. Something has to give way. Either that job or business will give way when something happens. Or you better give way so that that job will continue to live and business will continue to exist. Both cannot continue for too long. Let's think about it. You need time to rest. Take time on holiday, husband and wife. Take time to go and rest. That's why even pastors, it's good that we take time and, and just go away from our families and go out. Jesus did that. He went on the mountain. Stay there 40 days and 40 nights. Other times they will just go apart and just go and pray alone. He will leave his um, disciples somewhere. It's just, it's just wisdom to do that. Amen. It's wisdom to do that. As I close up, I close up with this. Joshua 22, 1 to 6. And I'm rounding up with this. Then Joshua called the Rebenites and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh too and said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you and have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. Three. Ye have not left your brethren these many days unto this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. Do you know how this applies to us? Those of you that have been close to the brethren in the house of God, that you have regularly been fellowshipping with God's children, you are the one that... Joshua is talking about there. When we, when we fellowship together, just like God commanded that we should not forsake the assembly of what? God's children as the manner of song is. When we do all of that, what we are doing is we are going to provoke the blessings of God to come upon us. And you will see, they provoked the blessings. 
<laughs> to come. I will show you. When you come to the house of God, when you come to the house of God and you fellowship with brethren, you are what two things you are doing. You are obeying the commandment of God. Because the reason why you are alive is that you can worship God and bring pleasure to him and make God to feel happy that he has created you. The truth is not everyone that is alive, living today, that God is happy that he has created. Some are a burden to God. Some are pain to him. Just like the children of Israel were when they were disobedient. They called Moses. These people are stiff naked people. They, they, are, they are grieving my heart. I can't deal with them anymore. Please allow me to kill all of them in the wilderness and I will raise up a new Israel through you. God was fed up. He was fed up. He was fed up. Moses had to plead. No, please, God, don't do that. Please. If you do that, other nations around us, they will think that it's because you don't have power to take them to the promised land. That's why you quickly kill them there. They will not understand what they were, going, they were doing to you. He was pleading their cause. And eventually, what happened? The Lord submitted to Moses. He said, okay. Same thing, the church, the Laodicean church, in Revelation chapter 3. Didn't they grieve God? He said, I will spew you out. They became an irritation to God. They, they irritated God so much. He said, you are neither hot nor cold. If you want to be hot, be hot. If you want to be cold, be cold. But all this lukewarmness is a problem to me. I can't deal with it. Pastor Sarah mentioned that during her prayer. She mentioned it during her prayer. Do you know that some of us irritate God? We irritate God. It's mercy that has kept us alive till today. That's the reason why the Bible study of today, Sunday school of today, is so important. I was nearly in tears last night when we were having some of the school review online, the topic is improving your commitment to God. So because we're not even committed to God, every little thing, you will get angry and say you're not coming to church. Every little thing, you will get angry and say, oh, they did this, oh, they did that. Ah, 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 ah. We're all walking do we get angry like that in our places of work? Don't we have conflict resolution? Don't we have dispute settlement? Don't you have issues and settle it? Why is it only the house of God that you will be acting and wanting people to come and be prostrating to you to beg you to come and walk or even to come to church? What kind of a world is this? Every little thing makes you get upset and you are someone that was destined for hell you are supposed to have died the mercy of God saved you and yet you don't value that mercy you just treat God anyhow look at the way Pastor Sarah was talking with passion look at the way Prophet Ed was teaching us with passion Those who want to experience rest are those who must commit to God. Who must commit to God. Don't treat God anyhow. Don't treat God like he's your, he's your servant or your slave. Some people treat God in a way as if you, they only go to him when they need him. When they don't really need him, they don't care about him. It hurts. Imagine the human. If somebody treats you like that, won't it hurt? Look at what he did for children of Israel. Everything they needed, he gave them. Their shoes were not were not worn out. Their, sho their shoes were not torn. Their clothes were not torn. 
He gave them water. He gave them pillar of cloud by a day, pillar of fire by night. When they said they needed something, a food more, more stronger than manna, he gave them quail, you know, meat, everything. There was no water. He gave them water. Their enemies came. He fought them. He did not allow them to be put to shame. Yet they frustrated this God to the point where that God wants to kill them. Ah, man! In your shuru. Oh, my goodness. But you, you don't have to be in that capacity of such people. You have to be different. Because everything we do, we have the reward here on earth and the reward waiting in heaven. Everything we do in this world, we are doing it for tomorrow. We are doing it for tomorrow. So we need to be careful. We need to be careful. Verse 3, Joshua 22, 3. Ye have not left your brethren these many days unto this day. But have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. For, and now the Lord your God has given rest unto your brethren. Only those that have kept to their brethren. Those that have not left their brethren. Those that have kept to the instructions. They are the ones that that the word applies to, and that's the one that they're addressing there. For, and now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren, as he promised them. Therefore, now return ye and get you unto your tents. Just like the Lord is asking you, as you leave here now, return to your tents and be ready to enjoy something special. And unto the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of Jordan. Five. But take diligence, heed to the commandment of the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave unto them, and to serve him. With all your heart and with all your soul. That's all that the Lord wants from us. Serving with all your heart and with all your soul. And look at verse 6. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away. And they went unto their tents. The Lord wants to bless you. He wants to send you unto your tents. To go and continue to be enjoying your season of rest round about. I pray that you will not miss it. In the name of Jesus. I would like you all to rise to your feet. And you are going to pray. Say, Father, anything that will make me miss my season of rest. Please remove it from my life right now. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray with that prayer. Begin to pray. Father, anything that will make me to miss the season of my rest, remove it from my life in the name of Jesus. Anything that will make me miss my season of rest, oh God, remove it from me in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, anything that will make me miss my season of rest, remove it from me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Second prayer you're going to pray. Say, Father, give me rest round about. In this month and in the months to come in the name of Jesus. Now begin to pray with that. Begin to pray. Father, give me rest round about. In this month and in the months to come in the name of Jesus. Father, give me rest round about. In this month and in the months to come in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, give me rest round about. In this month and in the months to come, in the name of Jesus. Father, give me rest round about. In this month and in the months to come, in the name of Jesus. Have mercy upon me, O God. Thank you, everlasting King of glory. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. The last prayer you're going to pray. Say, O Lord, establish me in my season of rest. Some people, they jump in and out of victory. 
the jump in and out of rest. So the jump in and out of blessings. But in this one, you are going to be established there. This rest will be permanent in you and on you in the name of Jesus. So say, Father, establish me in my season of rest in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Father, Lord, establish me in my season of rest. Father, 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 establish me in my season of rest. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, establish me in my season of rest. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Father, we thank you for your promise. We stand upon your promise, O oh God. And we know that it is done. Thank you for settling our case, O oh God. We enter into our season of rest, roundabout, medically, financially, intellectually, in every area in our homes, our marriages, our businesses, our employment. We enter into our season of rest and we are settled in it, O oh God. Establish us in our rest. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Can we sit that in God's presence?